Tonight, authorities in Illinois trying to solve a 14-year mystery, searching a suburb for the remains of Stacy Peterson, the fourth wife of convicted killer Drew Peterson. One man, four wives, a suspicious death, and a disappearance. You were almost... Law enforcement acting on potential evidence provided by Stacy's sister, Cassandra Kales. Kale says she obtained a video recording of skeletal remains in the water in May. A new search for the remains of Stacy Peterson today turned up nothing. State police and the FBI searched a southwest suburban con Responding to the ruling. I did not kill Kathleen! To which Kathleen's sister says... Yes, you did. All right, now for a first-hand account uh, on all of this breaking news, the woman who has not given up searching for her sister for 16 years, uh, she joins us live now, Stacy's sister, Cassandra Kales. Uh, Cassandra, thank you for being with us. You have been relentless um, looking for your sister and what happened here, and this is a bombshell tonight, uh, the fact that, that these remains have been found in the canal there where Alex was just standing. Welcome back to the channel everybody where we cover true crime mystery to the missing. This is Drew Peterson, an arrogant, abusive, and eventual killer who grew up in the state of Illinois. After marrying his high school sweetheart and a stint in the military, he would eventually join law enforcement in Broylin Brook, Illinois. During his early years, he married and got divorced twice before Drew Peterson would marry his third wife, Kathleen Savio, in 1992. She was presented with all the opportunities, the trips, the gifts, and the home, and having children, it was too hard to resist. He loved her, and that's all she wanted. And she loved him? Yes, very much. But soon that love would once again turn to hate infidelity, and now violence. He grabbed her wrist and he just threw her against the refrigerator hard and just went after her. And their marriage would last just over a decade. Just like his previous two marriages, Peterson would cheat on his third wife with a much younger girl who was just turning 17 at the time. Unlike the previous two wives, Savio wanted to take half of everything in the divorce, including Peterson's pension and their kids. But Peterson had another plan in mind to make that all go away. Around the time of the divorce, Kathleen Savio verbally told family and friends that she had feared for her life and that if she was found dead, it would look like an accident, but Peterson would be the man responsible. Sure enough, Savio's body would be found in a bathtub in her home in 2004, which originally was ruled an accidental drowning. She uh, failed to respond at the door to allow me to bring the children home. I had neighbors go into the house and they found her uh, dead in the bathtub. People initially suspected Peterson, but he had a seemingly rock solid alibi. He was home with Stacy, now his wife. They married five months before Kathleen died. During this time, Peterson had now moved on and married his fourth wife, Stacy Peterson, who was 35 years younger than her senior, Drew Peterson. But this marriage wouldn't last very long as Stacy began to see the true monster that Peterson really was. Soon after marrying Stacy, the couple had two children, Drew's fifth and sixth, if you're keeping track. Stacy was the reason that we all reconciled. It was her that brought us all back together because she insisted that her children were gonna know all of their aunts and uncles. She even took care of the two children Drew had with Kathleen, who moved in with them after her death. That's the kind of person she was. But somewhere between the beginning and four years later, things changed in a big way. In August of 2007, Stacy had told a friend that she was coached by Drew to be his alibi when his third wife was found dead in a bathtub. Sadly, Stacy had told Minnie she was fearing for her life but could not escape from Drew Peterson. And sadly, Stacy would go missing on October 29th of 2007. Drew was the last one to see Stacy. Never 
forget. It was the last time he ever saw her. She at first just to told me more things about her, her life and her marriage, how, how hard it was, the jealousy, and, and then she looked at me and I just had this sense that she was about to say something profound. I said, whatever you want to tell me, you're free to do it. And she, she sort of stared at me and she said, he did it. I said, he did what? And she said, Drew killed Kathleen Salvio. Drew killed his third wife. What did you say to her at that point? I believe one of the first things I said to her was, what do you want me to do with this information? And she said, I don't want you to do anything, I just want you to know. A few weeks later, she was gone, but in her absence, new questions came rushing in. Drew Peterson claimed that Stacy had taken a bunch of cash and bikinis and left him, but her family and friends knew that she would never leave her kids. This would spark law enforcement to look closer at one of their own, and a month later, in November of 2007, they would exhume Kathleen Savio's body and determine that it was not an accidental drowning, but Savio was actually murdered. She had multiple bruises and a large gash on her head. Unfortunately, they could not press charges right away due to the lack of evidence, and with Stacy Peterson still missing, it would take until May 7th of 2009 to officially charge Peterson with Savio's murder. Drew Peterson would be convicted by a group of his peers in 2012 and sentenced to 38 years. Smile at him. The jury deliberates and when the verdict comes back, it's a shocker, at least for Drew. Guilty of murder. Here he is in court responding to the ruling. I did not kill Kathleen! To which Kathleen's sister says, Yes, you did. When they said guilty. But while all of this was going on, there was a young mother, Stacy Ann, who had been missing since late 2007, and she had not been found. Stacy had a very close sister, Cassandra Cal, who was on a mission to find her sister, Stacy. She was able to get funds for diving equipment and an ROV, which is a submersible that has cameras on it. She took this equipment to the Illinois Canal in Lockport, which is less than 10 miles from where her sister Stacy was last seen. On November 19th of 2007, she found what she believes was her sister's remains. Here is her most recent interview with Brian Anton, and what she shares is very shocking. All right, now for a first-hand account uh, on all of this breaking news. The woman who has not given up searching for her sister for 16 years happened here. And this is a bombshell tonight, uh, the fact that, that these remains have been found in the canal there where Alex was just standing. H how did this all come about, Cassandra? Walk us through it. Um, basically, I've never stopped. Um, we've had... Numerous sonar searches, and back in 2007, um, November 19th in 2007, we found a female body, which was basically my sister. Um, you could see the hair waving, the breasts, and her legs. She was becoming buoyant, and but not buoyant enough to come to the top of the surface because she was weighed down. Um, she was... What is shocking is that Cassandra claims that the female body she discovered in 2007 was mostly intact. She could tell it was weighted down, and this would be a strong argument to support her theory. This could be her sister. As a former friend of Drew Peterson, Rick Mims, claimed he had a strange encounter and conversation with Drew Peterson. So he didn't talk about his murders. No. He was, yeah, okay. This is Just want to clarify. And, right, right, okay. He, all right, yeah. And that's when he told yeah. me all about if you dispose of a body, you can put it in any type of container. You can put it underwater, you can put it in the ground. But eventually, the gases from the body are going to make the, the package pop to the top of the ground. So you have to put scuba weights or some type of weights in a barrel to keep them down. So he says this before. This is months before all this months even happened. Before. And yeah. then you're at the house. I trip over the bag and it's scuba weights, but it's not the new scuba weights he showed me, it was the old ones. What did you so think? So wait, 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 wait. So you've now seen exactly... Moving back to the interview with Cassandra, it appears that she had gone out there on at least two occasions. One time in late 2007, 
when the body she claims found was more intact. And then she went in May of 2008. Um, she was gone and we just went on continuing searching. Then the spring of 2008, we expanded and continued and we found her um, down the canal, uh, resting on the bottom. You can see decomp, not in that video. Um, there's actually another image um, and it's, you can see decomp and the flesh um, going. You can actually see a fish um, above her body. She still had flesh, but if she lost her eyes and her feet were gone. Um, it was kind of turning skeletal. Um, inform, inform the state police. Um, again, nothing. Um, I think I fought them for like a year. And then they just went out and did a blind dive one day and didn't even like re-sonar it. Then, um, which is, I, the technology keeps getting better and better and I looked for the best of the best and that's when I found the one and only sonar ROV and had it brought in from Alaska and that's what we got. Oh, and other bones and you know where, where they are, I, I would think there'd be a dive team in the water tonight going to collect the remains. No. Like, what, what is going on? That image, that, well, that's actually live video you're looking at. You can see the silt moving around the, the grabber claw. Um, so basically, we had the ROV sitting on top, just in that position, sitting on the bottom. And I had called state police. I had called the state's attorney. They came out. They seen it. I even set up a tent because it was cold out. Um, and we showed them everything and then we just stood there and they just said, well, you expect us to come out tonight or to right now? And I just get pushed back. So they say the area is cleared, but you've got the sonar RV there uh, with the images. Yeah. I mean, both of those things can't be true. And, and, and how far that that away could that, that have floated? I mean. It didn't, it covers with They said it was a rock. Instantly. Yeah, they said that was a rock. And I actually have video footage of that when we went to move the ROV, that we actually bumped the skull and you could see the underside of the skull, like the, you know, the bottom of your skull. It fell off. But it gets resilted so over very quick. Sadly, Cassandra has been fighting this battle for 17 years now, and if what she's saying is true, that means she found her sister literally a month after her disappearance and knew where her remains were, but has not received the help that she deserves. Hopefully, with the recent press coverage, this will help garner new help to recover her sister remains if they are at the bottom of the Illinois Canal. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Please smash that like button. And thank you so much for watching.